What's a mixtape drop? I'm the king of Long Island. I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome to LI on the Rise. It's all about people chasing their dreams, chasing success, and people who are on the rise. Shout out to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. Make sure you do if you have not already. And today we are joined by two passionate and hardworking musicians. Please introduce yourselves to the people. I'll go first. All right, my name is Shannon. I'm the bassist of the Muckrakers slash one of the singers. So, huh. yeah, I'm it's me. Kyler Sane. Uh, I'm from the Monk Raiders. I'm a guitarist, one of the vocalists, and both of us, we work on a festival called Minostock as well, and a booking group called Minostock at Events. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Now, to start this off, I just got one question to ask both of you guys, and that is, is punk rock dead? Uh, I mean, everything's evolving, and everything mm. looks and sounds a lot different than it used to back in the day, and uh, one thing I've heard in one of the videos is basically like, you know, a lot of bands that came up with certain genres, you know, they rise to fame and some other people, you know, they kind of do whatever they're going to do. But then, you know, there's always going to be a new thing that's going to blow up. Hell yeah. And it's always going to be mm-hmm. derived from like punk or metal or whatever it is. Yeah. And I mean, we definitely, I don't know if we could have really existed musically uh, back when punk was created without having experienced all different things like death metals, arrival, and. Uh, all these other different things from jazz and funk and crazy progressive music that is more present nowadays. So it's true because you guys kind of are of a mixture, you know, with like I guess a base of punk rock, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah. I would you, say so. You, that's you'd like say that's so? like that's probably like the base of like the house is like the punk rock, yeah. and then like you know the walls and all the other things are like different styles of music, like you know death metal. You got got some hip hop, got some funk, got where's, some jazz. Where's the hip hop? It's in there. Don't worry. All right. It's it's fucking, you, look, you look deep That's enough. where it is. Uh, <laughs> so we got uh, we got bars in our future? What's up? <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. Possibly. Uh, there, I mean, there could be in the future. Yeah. You have to watch out for it. It could yeah. happen. It's I mean, a mixtape drop. Man. I'm the king of Long Island. I'm just saying. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Did you really Mama. just say that? <laughs> to everybody else, uh, <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> again and again. Anyway. I really appreciate that you did that. <laughs> it's not going to lie. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so your sound it really stands out. It's really different from the other bands. But another thing that stands out about your band is you guys tour a lot. Yeah. Quite, yes. Could you give us some do's and don'ts when it comes to touring? Well, I could definitely throw a bunch uh, of things. I think right one the do off the bat: take a shower. It, I, All right. right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. one for everybody. Now, let's, let's go like kind of. So, weird. one of the biggest things I realize: a lot of people who toured don't really do probably the, the most right is like as far as transportation and where you should be staying and how you should be doing that mm. uh for one drive at night after a show have a place to stay or at least if you're like driving it the next day and you don't have time whatever you, you could always go to a plant fitness and like if you have a subscription or whatever you can like take a shower there and do whatever but beyond that so drive at night so you could avoid traffic and overheating your car and possibly just becoming late and also like if you're also on tours with other bands and if they're not on the same page i mean i really don't know how to handle that kind of situation because we're always kind of mm-hmm. at places sooner than others yeah. but uh doing a lot of that is probably one of the biggest thing is not driving during the day because yeah, I've, I, I've met people on tour that were coming from places a lot closer than where we were coming from and like their van broke down like very early on and like then they were late and that's one thing um as far as another thing hmm. i mean definitely in terms of tour routing you want to make your tour route in a way that it's going to bring you back to where you started because right a lot of people are like let's drive straight this way and then we're going to drive straight back the other way and it's just you yeah. make it like a round yeah you gotta make yeah. like a little circle you gotta make circles around the tri-state area yeah know? um that's a, that's a pretty good pro tip right there next to having a planet fitness subscription well yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, I, I honestly like i don't really like planet fitness i just i like i only like the fact that they're literally everywhere that what? is the only he's, thing that's great about he's it he's more of a retro fitness yeah i like retro fitness more because <laughs> you know fucking beef jim know. beef <laughs> <laughs> yeah um 
definitely, if you are going far places, maybe have breaks. But we kind of just did some crazy stuff. Like we went from Tennessee to Texas like two weeks ago, it and was that was fourteen hours. Fourteen hour 14 drive hour straight. We were on the road. Like we got in the van with a show in Tennessee ending at like one o'clock in the morning, and we got to where we needed to be in Texas at three p.m. the next day. Mm-hmm. So don't do that. Yeah. Um. We learned from that. I mean, it was it was a good experience, but like when you're driving that long and in the show, if the show is not good, you know, then it's not worth it. Uh, yeah. You would want to have more shows on the way out there. Uh, but it was still a good experience overall mm-hmm. because we were able to get far enough where going on the bottom of the South, basically going like Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, all the Carolinas looping back up, you know, it made more sense yeah. at that point. Granted, maybe we could have hit like Kentucky or something or Mississippi. Or, or Kansas. Or, or Kansas. Kansas. <laughs> or Kansas. That's a skip over state. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so no. you guys got to have some crazy tour stories. Oh, man. <laughs> I feel like this tour, I can't think of many cr- the crazy stories, but I mean, last tour had some great stories. Yeah, I mean, last you want you want some about uh about the homeless guy that called you uh, mm-hmm. uh the, the one with Daniel and yeah, all right. So when we were in Wisconsin, <laughs> we were playing. Are a we allowed show. to curse on this? Absolutely. You fucking okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. okay, great. Right. So, Tyler, tell story. <laughs> so we were in Wisconsin and we we're playing a show, and I remember at one point, halfway through, I was getting a headache, and I had left, and I went to the van to go get some medicine. And this is before the other half of the story, but uh, there was this one person who was just skating, and I was like, oh, shit, I like your skateboard. And he's like, I think you're beautiful. And then <laughs> the next second, he was just like, you know, I think I died earlier. Like, I'm hanging out with my family, and I think I got hit by a car, and I think I'm just, like, wandering around as a spear right now. And he kind of <laughs> went a little bit more into his story, and I was like, I'm going to go get something from my van. And then I came back, and I was like, Here's some Excedrin. I hope you feel better. Uh, I'll see you later. And, wow. you know, so that interaction, he was just like, I love you. You're an angel, whatever. But, like, later on, the show's over now, and we're hanging out outside of our van, talking to one of the bands out there. And I'm pretty sure it was Arson Party. Shout out to them from Big Michigan. Shout out. Wait a minute. No, it wasn't Arson Party. Never mind. Shout out Don't still. Shout out yeah. I forget which band it was now. We're taking that shout out. on the safe word. No. No. Oh, no. Yeah, it was a lot of bands. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Oh, no, there's too many bands. Too many, too many. I, band. I remember John Thompson's in the band, and they have some violin in it. That's what I'm remembering now. Anyway, so we were talking to these guys. Yeah. Debility. That's the band it there was. We go. So, shout out. out. <laughs> <laughs> from, <laughs> they're from Illinois, not Michigan. Anyway, so we're hanging out with these guys, talking about the van, talking about meeting up with them. And all of a sudden, you hear from down the street someone just like screaming something incoherently. But then a moment later, <laughs> you're just like, hear someone being like, I suck Danielle's dick for a thousand dollars. And then you just hear it like a couple seconds later. And yeah. then another couple seconds later, you keep on hearing He's getting this. getting closer at this And point. you just see like a dude just walking like a thousand miles stair, just walking real slow. And by the end of our conversation, I'm like, all right, he's really close to us, and we should walk back into the venue. And then when we were walking into the venue, you start seeing the neighboring bar people starting to get harassed by this person, like, in point-blank view, just being like, I suck Daniel's dick. And the girl's like, this isn't appropriate. And then she starts <laughs> saying it again in her face. <laughs> and then I go, so I go to the bands, and I'm just like laughing about it. I'm like, ha ha, this is happening. And then I turn around. <laughs> he's inside the bar. He, and he's staring at me. He just like has this dramatic, like he pours the water from the jug and he turns around and it's just like, and then <laughs> he's just like, you got a lily. I'm like, what? And he's like, you got a man. And I'm like, I point to like my girlfriend to the side. I'm like, I got her. And then he looks at her and he looks back at me. And he's like, that means you got something special. And then he looks at the mirror and he's like, I ain't got much. And then he starts he's talking going, to himself at this point. Yeah, he's got like this whole incoherent like monologue going on. <laughs> and then he turns back at me and he's just like, Can I just piss? Drink some water and piss, please. And then Shen escorts him to the bathroom. Yep. And then uh, we talk about what the heck was happening for a second. Then he comes out, and his closing line was, I'm the guy who makes sure all the money good. And then he left after eating some pizza. <laughs> Did he enjoy your set? He wasn't there for any of the show. Uh, oh, he, he was just, just wandering wanted, around. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to tell He's people that he had to piss. Yeah, he showed up after the show. Damn, you guys could have had a fucking sick fan. I feel like we could have had yeah, Sick he, in the head. Guy wandering around Illinois at night. 
Yeah. If you ever see this, we want you on. Like, yeah. straight yeah. up. <laughs> Tell your side of the story, but yeah. I think it was pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure there was Probably not a lie was. involved in any of that. Oh my yeah, God. I remember when we were uh, eating breakfast at the Boomer Diner or something, we were uh, like, we got to be incognito. We're in Detroit or whatever. Just, yeah. like, put up everything in the windows, you know, just be safe. And we were like, hope no one recognizes us from a band. And literally, I open my door and I put my leg out. I put one foot in the outside world. And someone's like, yo, you in a band? <laughs> it's like, you got some CDs. Yo, what's the name of your band? You got a Facebook page? And then he like immediately, the next second, he's like, all right, I got to go. See you later. Like I answer his questions. But like as soon as I answer him, he asked me another. And then he walked himself out of his own conversation. And then I was watching <laughs> the van the entire rest of us eating. But but he liked, <laughs> he liked your Facebook page, right? He might have. I this is know. a lot of very strange encounters that yeah. you can. We've had very what strange encounters. Like? Oh, I almost had a bobcat when we were in, te- in Tennessee. <sighs> Everyone was asleep, and this big cat was crossing the street, and like I almost nicked its butt with the van. I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Wait, was I the only one who saw this?" Because like I was scared. I was like, "I maybe I'm going crazy." Because like. Maybe I'm really tired. I don't know, but like I think I saw a big ass bobcat. A fucking bobcat. <laughs> yeah, it was it was scary. That was scary. Oh, the the best is when we when we were in Philadelphia. We played a show. We finished a show. We're like going to some like Philly cheesesteak place to eat. Yeah. And we're like, oh, you know, I heard the place is great. We're sitting in the van. There's no one else in the parking lot. I'm literally sitting there like like looking straight. And then I look to my left and I just see a guy just staring at me, just staring. And like it was the creepiest thing. And I remember I literally like jumped. I was like, I was like, holy shit. I was like, oh my god. He's like, do you have money? I was like, he didn't, oh he didn't make any sense. He was just like one of those story kind of no. homeless people yeah. who just. Living now is enough. <laughs> money, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me some of it. <laughs> oh my god. We gave him money and then he like kind of went away, but he kept lingering back while we were trying to order food. It was just you know. yeah. When we were in Texas, actually, the same exact thing happened. When we pl- uh, we parked at Planet Fitness and someone came out of nowhere. He's like, "Hey, can I get some money? Like at least three dollars. I need to get a drink." Or right. and like John gave him some change. But then the next second, like literally not even a minute has passed, and I walked out of the passenger seat. And he's like, can I get at least three? <laughs> like he did the yeah. same exact thing. Has the same <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I looked at him like, nah, like yeah. you, you get a drink from John's money, not me. You know? yeah. <laughs> he's trying to fucking hoard drinks or something. Man. Trying, you, know. you guys also, you know, awesome band. You do a sick uh, events with Munoz. M- M- Fuck, why is that it's the my hard- last name? I mean, it's, Munoz, it's Colombian. Munoz. Munoz, it's Munoz you can stock, say yeah. Munoz, you can say Munoz. Most people just say Muzzo or Munzo or just they don't say it right. Fuck that, we saying it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Munoz. Yeah, Munoz. Yeah, got it. There is another stock. festival called Muckfest. It's not ours though, so go I to it, know but don't expect us to be running. We're not. It. Yeah. So It's not in the state either. Do you guys find it hard balancing that and being in a band that's touring and shit? Like, what's, like, the deal with that? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> period. I mean, so, you know, like, we don't know what we're doing, but we're figuring it out. And it's just, you know, like, we toured a lot this year, and it was, like, kind of somewhat distracting to, like, try to work on, you know, stock itself. Yeah. But at the same time, compared to all the other years since we were at a house show, we had a venue already. Mm-hmm. Like, the past two years, we had moved it from the house to the Broadway Mall mm-hmm. and then from there to Station Sports, but that's where we're kind of keeping it right Planted, now. Yeah. And congratulations yeah. on that. You started this in your backyard, right? It literally the started event? in my backyard. And now, and now you guys are yeah, getting yeah. out there. That's, so. It's crazy. That's not it easy. Was, it was literally like a backyard barbecue party yeah, with like was, 20 people on the <clears throat> page, maybe 12. It was, uh, it was our first show. We didn't know how to make a show. Yep. We didn't even have Muck as like our name at that moment. We, yep. It was the year prior, but then you know he came back from college the first time, and then he was yeah. like, I got a drummer. We could do punk stuff. A guy yeah. likes Green Day. So he does. we mm-hmm. had five people playing three acts, and a lot of them were the same people. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know we just made something start, and we didn't think it was going to become a thing. And even years after repeating it, we didn't expect anything to happen from it. And I remember like the fourth year when it actually started to become a big deal. I was I like I was playing a show with Reluctant Mormon like the next day, my other band at the time, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, Mino Stock, this year's not going to be great." Like I'm thinking the show tomorrow is going to be really great, but that year freaking blew up. And then yes. the next show <laughs> we played like at a big spot with a big headliner wasn't even nearly as good. And then the next year it was like a freaking u- reunion between me and all people from my high school, which don't even know. Yeah. Like, they were showing up at the show. They didn't even know I was a part of it. 
And, like, that's there awesome. People, yeah. Hundreds of people. You couldn't even find parking in like. Yeah. And this is not like, like a house. This is literally at my house in my backyard. Where wow. there's parking everywhere normally. So. Yeah. It was crazy. People find out somehow and they just show up. It was just up. out of nowhere. Yeah. Basically. I mean, I, I think that the whole idea behind Munoz Sock from the beginning is this like, if you don't know how to like, if you don't know how to do something specific, just make it yourself. Do Be Figure your own out. platform. And, and do it that way Because I feel like That's why I made the festival Is like I don't know how to book shows I'm going to make my own show And I'm going to do it right here yeah. And then yeah, from there It just keeps stemming And it's just like This whole entrepreneurial thing So Yeah I mean It wasn't very ambitious At the beginning It was yeah. No one really had any idea of What was going to be It's kind of like a get together it, it was more or less it, it A get together It was a hangout yeah. The first we one never, definitely you know, we're, Like I was playing some shows Beforehand And he played a handful Beforehand But like we didn't know How to get a show yeah. And we only had like a month To like get a show Before I had to go away To college For another year mm-hmm. So like We just made something up And the fact that it kept going and growing, you know, it was a free show for the most part for the first couple of years. So, like, mm-hmm. it being free at a place where everyone seemed to know it, where it was going, there was so much word of mouth that yeah. it was able to cultivate a following all on itself just based off of those couple of factors. And it was fun. People were able to eat food, and you know, it was a potluck at first, and there was alcohol eventually, and video games towards the end, and bands from the scene towards the very end of it being at the house. Yeah. I think that it started feeling like an actual festival is when we started adding in bands that weren't from our immediate area. Because we added on, like, the first year, it really felt like a festival. We added on two bands from New Jersey, and then, like, one of my friends from college that, like, lives in Massachusetts, and, like, it kind of, I was like, wow, this actually feels like a festival. Like, everyone's, like, down for whatever's happening right now, and there's a shitload of people here that don't live in this state. Like, it was just, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, uh, we haven't really been touring aggressively until, like, this past year. I mean, like, a year prior, we did have, like, our week first, well, two years prior, we had, like, our first weekender. But throughout most of our career, we only had, like, uh, one-offs. Yeah. And uh, we really didn't play out very much no. uh, outside of, like, Long Island, let alone even the boroughs until, like, a couple years in. So, like, the fact that we ended up meeting the Schwam, uh we met them in Brooklyn and then they ended up doing our album with us. Like we had to yeah. lose one First of our album. drummers, like our sixth drummer. And then they stepped in and I like told them like, Hey, can you do drums on it? And they're like, why don't we just record it? So now like we have like a family connection with a band that stems five or six years ago and like they've been playing all the Muno stocks with us mm-hmm. and like they even headlined the first one we had with them back at the house. And since then, you know, they've been co headlining it with us. But then that was some seeds planted there where we can, like, now have family out in New Jersey. He's went away to school in Massachusetts, so then we've had people out there. And then, you know, a lot of the time when we met John after that we finished the album, like, I was going out of shows two to six times a week. And, like, that's when I had, like, my pseudo goth phase where I was wearing makeup and, like, the nose liner yeah, yeah. and everything. And uh, I would always see touring bands, and I'd always – not really understand the gravity of networking with touring bands until now but like i was doing it before people were really seemingly paying attention to it as much like if you build a connection with them it only like gets bigger and bigger from there on in like it's just mm-hmm. a giant spider web but like if you're like oh they're just a touring band i don't care like they're not from around here it's not gonna bite me in the ass eventually like you're never gonna know anyone outside of your friends yeah. that you knew before music really yeah yeah it goes a long way people don't realize yeah like, we're starting to realize we know like like people know who we are in places yeah. we've never even i yet. i literally at was talking to some <clears throat> people today about getting a show in vermont we never play there yet and a, a bunch of chain of talking about talking to someone else talking to someone else talking to someone else to get the show to happen by the time i actually got to someone who said yes they already knew who we were so it kind of already worked out, and like Absolutely. I never met this person, but it's cool that like some of those opportunities happen. And another funny one mm-hmm. stems off of our Texas date, where literally I had added so many people when like I started being more active on Facebook, and like some of them stuck around for many years. Like one woman that kind of looks at me like an adoptive child, basically, like six or seven years I've had her on Facebook, and she has a uh, a boyfriend that's in a band, whatever. And basically, when I needed a Texas show, I just asked her if she knew anything about it, and then I got put on a show, and I just didn't think about it for the rest of until like until I met her, I was like, oh, here we are. That's crazy. Like, 
that's not even like me networking with a band person, but the fact that like I've kept contact with people, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. You know, and then I was able to meet other people too, like that I've had on Facebook for your yeah. year plus. You never know what mm-hmm. connection is the right connection and you're like, you know what I'm saying? That's kinda what how that goes, you know. Because yeah. uh everybody just thinks you gotta keep it in the scene, but there's also other people as well that you can uh yeah. Contact and can come together. Yeah, there. it's fucking. Yeah. it's fucking like seven billion people outside this door. Or some shit like that. It's yeah. fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, and speaking of uh, the the Long Island scene here, what is your opinion on it? Like, you think people support each other? I definitely think that it's uh. Some people don't really know show etiquette. Sometimes. Yeah. I feel kinda, like it's I f- one of those. I feel like s- definitely there are some clicks and there's just too many different scenes and like Mm -hmm. even when like i came up in uh when john joined the band and everything i realized you know there were different things like blacklist collective was a thing for a while and it did a lot of good stuff for the scene and then there was sbc and ecc obviously has been around and uh things like planet of soul sound and like equilibrium was kind of coming up around then also but it's like sometimes i feel like um people will kind of play with the same booker group and sometimes not expand but then also not everyone is nearly as genre uh like as yeah Mm, (laughs) (laughs) so like it's not you know some of these some of these uh grouping whatever booking (laughs) groups they don't sometimes book more than like one type of genre of music yeah i guess you could say like i know my friends in sbc had really covered a lot of bass with like punk and metal bands but like if you're coming out of nowhere and you're like a ska or whatever band that's like on the more heavy light side like it might not make sense to be booking with them and it kind of makes sense why some people might form unintentional clicks and not see the benefit of networking with someone that doesn't play music similar to you Mm -hmm. i mean i don't see why you shouldn't because you never know like i've always been like at a show sometimes early on i'd be like oh the people are here for this band they probably only like this band but realistically, maybe they don't even like that band, and maybe they like your more your band more. Yeah. There's a, yeah, a distinct possibility Absolutely. that that is the case. Yeah. Now I gotta ask, what is some of this etiquette you're talking about? Uh, that, I mean, one of the first things is watching a bands that just watched you play. Just in general, That's one thing. and staying for the whole show because it's like yeah. people play and they're like, "All right, you guys should stay for the show," but I'm really gonna leave. Yeah. And it's like. I don't know that like that kills me yeah so like that's that's one of them you know you should definitely stick come early like be there for loading if you like if you are in a band I mean if you are just coming to like spectate you can do whatever the hell you want yeah, realistically yeah. but if you want to be taken a little bit more serious like, in the music scene yeah, yeah, yeah I mean depending on who's really watching like you want to be there for loading time you got to be like you know if you like have a quota or something like with bigger promoters I always try to be the person like sells more tickets Mm -hmm. whatever than is even necessary i give them the money immediately and then i'm already making money and i can move on from there on in and i don't have to worry about screwing up tension because Mm -hmm. i've been that person who is just like i signed on on for something and then i'd be like crying to them in a message and then be like ah i don't know man it seems like a lot i'm not from the area like i've Mm -hmm. i've been that person so like i can sympathize but at the same time uh, know what you're getting into and you know commit to some stuff and mm-hmm. another thing about show etiquette hmm. so definitely stay as much as you can um definitely don't start fights with people that's one True. thing yeah that happened Big in one of our shows but that happened <laughs> once where you know yeah. we made everything a little awkward for everybody but yeah and the show almost got shut down oh man yeah wow that's crazy um yeah you guys are shutting down fucking shows out here because of fist fights yeah, yeah. yeah just, is mosh pits that heavy for your shows no, actually, you know, yeah, it's for weird. Us. People like just stare at us. They're just like, "What the? Yeah, what are these guys doing?" Like, it's very infrequent that people mosh to our music because mm-hmm. a lot of the time they're just analyzing what we're doing, yeah. or maybe they don't care. I can't really tell. But people come up to us after our set, or we'll talk to them because I'll bring myself to talk to them, and they'll tell us how they enjoy it a lot. So, I mean, we don't really cause any crazy moshing. I mean, it does happen, but. Not like we don't tell them to do it. That's yeah. our thing. We don't. If you want to mosh, you can mosh, but I'm not going to tell you what the, to do. Like the very first bit of dialogue that I always just spew out after our intro, like when we start playing self loathing, which is basically always our opener at yep. this moment. I'll be like, if you want to, you can clap. <laughs> but, but I don't really, you know. So I'm not one of the nicest sit. bands. 
Uh, one of those, uh, like, yeah, you want to, you don't, you don't have to. Enjoy how you want to fucking enjoy it. It's yeah. pretty much how you, you guys yeah, are pretty much. about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you have any other things about show etiquette? Show etiquette. Um, hmm. I mean, promote your show. I mean, it's yeah. not, because also that's something that, that you can't always rely on just the booker to mm. be promoting yeah. the show. Oh, yeah. Like it, it's like a kind of a give and take relationship, like any other one. You got to give some to get some, and like it's a back and forth thing. It's you can't just be like, oh, they didn't promote the show at all, so like it's their fault nobody showed up. It's like the whole point is to bring your people to mix with our people, and then everyone mingles together, and team then you create yeah, it's yeah. team yeah, effort, absolutely. and then you create a whole scene. <laughs> People in Long Island scene don't realize how well they have it because outside of this scene, there's not much going on out there. I mean, there is, but there isn't. It's very few and it's far between. Over here, we're ridiculously oversaturated with so many things happening all the time. To kind of go off of that, you know, there's a lot of things also going on out of the scene, but it's just different how many opportunities really lie. You know, yeah. I mean... People will tell us like they have to like start off as a touring band to really play Literally. shows. Some states have like very few venues, and like a lot of people, you know, aren't twenty one when they start a band, and yeah. a lot of spots are twenty one up exclusively. Yeah, yeah. No. like if it, like if you're in like North Carolina per se, like that's a big state. We don't realize how big that state is. Some of these venues are like an yeah. hour to two hours away from each yeah. other just to hit a second venue. So like, you're literally already. You're basically starting off as a touring band. While you're when you're here, in an hour stretch, we're probably gonna hit like thirty five venues, if that, or yeah. even like a handful of venues. Like yeah, there's gonna be venues. Yeah, everywhere, literally. Even some spots that aren't exactly venues or things you don't even expect would be uh, show ready. You can make show ready, like the spot that we book all the time, mm-hmm. One Eye Jacks. It literally is just a bar side and then a corner where you can put a band in. And it does not look like it would be an ideal spot to book, but it's literally my main spot to book shows from when I bring in touring bands. Yeah. So like it because you pack it out very easily. Oh yeah, that's I mean the, that's the best part. The cap, very small, intimate. The, uh, the capacity is only fifty or so people. So like if you have four bands and one of them is a touring band and they all draw about ten. Uh, 10 and then some of the other ones 20 bands like you're mm-hmm. already there mm-hmm. and then you get people just going to the bar just chilling so. yeah. yeah i mean there's been times where we've had like 80 people there so yeah. like i think the best part about that place is the fact that like you have no other choice but to watch the bands when you go there yeah that's how small the place is that, that's yeah. always exactly. nice too especially yeah. for the bands as well because yeah. How many times have you guys played and everybody's back is facing to you because they're all at the bar? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Especially oh, yeah. with other bands around here as well. Yeah. That happens or too. playing to like nobody. Yeah. No you, know that, you know that like awkward gap where it's like people gap stage with people performing? Yeah. You know that awkward. Yeah, like, it's like that awkward gap where I'm just like, hey, come closer. Actually, right? don't. It's get near really me. Weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you always get those bands. Come up, come up. It's like you didn't even play your first song yet. Yeah. I don't even know if I like you yet. Exactly. That's, <laughs> what do you expect? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. crazy. That's a good. That's a nice outlook on the scene for sure too. Because like you know, we get a lot of hip hop artists out yeah. here, and the, the contrast to that is that yeah. they go out of state more times than not and have better shows than they do out here. Really? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. more times than not. And like you guys are saying, it's a luxury being out here. You know that well, that, that that, and it just goes it to show is. the difference in the scene as well. Yeah, and like the diversity of what you can find out here as well. That is sense. true. So, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, hip hop's a little. It's different. I think it's definitely a different beast. Because I mean, it's it's like it what? Is. It's like the it's like the number one style of music right mm-hmm. now. Like it's like very pop. Yeah. And I mean, like that's not a bad thing. It's a great thing. But like the pockets for like us per se to like a hip hop artist. Like I went to a show on like a Tuesday night in New York City, and like there was like eighteen hip hop artists on this show at Sounds of Brazil. And like every single hip hop artist drew fifteen to thirty people. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was like a Tuesday night, it was like two hundred and fifty people there. Yeah, they All do the great scene. over there. SOBs is crazy. Yeah, yeah. SOBs is crazy. Yeah. So mm. but it's a little different, a little different with us. We got you know, there's still people who like the music, obviously, but you know, 
we gotta like you know move rocks and like you know like shake things around like a rug. You know? Yeah, you gotta find people. We really yeah. have to go and find. Where's these people. the fucking scene, man? Like, gotta yeah, find. yeah. To reiterate uh, about the whole LI scene, it's just there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. Um, just I don't know. You gotta kind of really go out there and see what's going on. And not just expect people to come out to your shows uh, because uh, I mean, yeah, like <laughs> I, I feel guilty because we're touring all the time, and most shows are obviously on the weekend, and like yeah. in between touring most weekends for most of this year, like you don't really have any time to go out, even if there are shows on the weekday, because you're kind of like going back to the domestic life. Like I have a relationship with someone; yeah. she lives with me. We have a dog. You got to do work about getting more tour things mm-hmm. set up. Like I'm touring and then booking tours while touring. Basically, so uh, but yeah, like you guys are non stop, man. Yeah, literally, it was like there was like a time there where I think for two months straight we were on the road every single weekend. Wow, yeah, in the last year we have hit 20 states of America, we've hit half Fucking the country, almost half the country. That's crazy, yeah. ridiculous That's good for you guys, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So we only have like what, like five states on the east coast, so we on, on like at least this side on well, the east side of America, Vermont's yeah. coming soon, Vermont, yeah. Maine. In Florida, uh, we haven't hit. We haven't. We stayed in there. We, stayed we in did the stay in Florida. I want to get into one of your songs. My favorite track from you guys is uh, Doomed. Okay. Really fuck with that song. All right. And I really like your lyrics. It starts off, welcome to the land of the lost, where people lost their course. Yeah. And then you guys have a moment in the song where all the instruments stop and you emphasize, if we don't make a change... We'll all be doomed. Yes. Can you please explain what that song's about? All right. Um, I feel like I wrote that song in a sense to like kind of like it's kind of like a it's like it's like the most warped version of reality in my head. It's kind of like I kind of wrote it in like a story essence where I was like, "There's a different world that's not this one, and it's all really messed up." And something's got to change because nobody clearly like cl- cares about each other and stuff like that. But like it's really just a reflection on our actual reality, but a lot more warped and like you know, worse. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, no, I love that song. That was like literally like, the third song we ever wrote, and I think it was like one of the fastest wow. ones we ever wrote. Because Kyle sweet. was like, we we have a romance song. I'm like, we're gonna do it right now. And I'm like sitting there, like, like just playing. That song is so much fun. Um, I literally was just like, I'm gonna try to just write something very simple and then just throw some lyrics over it. The lyrics actually were inspired from seeing Lincoln Park the first time at Madison Square Garden. Show them the fucking hand tat. Lincoln Park. Park, my favorite fucking band. Yes, oh, yeah. my favorite band too. Shout out Lincoln Park. Rest yeah. in peace, Chester. I'll be broken mm. forever. Yeah. But as seriously. you were saying, yeah, no, seriously, I mean. I like I saw Lincoln Park. I was in GA at Madison Square Garden, and like they're on their Minutes to Midnight tour, and I was in the crowd, and both like Chester and Mike jumped in the crowd. It was amazing, oh, man. coolest concert I've literally ever been to. And like I just remember going home, and I'm like, I need to write music right now. I was like, I need, I'm inspired. I need to write some lyrics, and like a lot of lyrics to that song came from seeing Lincoln Park. That's awesome. awesome. So shout out them, man. Love yes, that band. Seriously. You can you could pretty much deduct from that that he wrote those lyrics before the band even existed. Yes, let alone the, the, the song. band was that was not even existent at he this point. He didn't even know me. I didn't know Kyler at this point. Like they I just have a backlog of things that I've written and That's I'm like, hey, well some damn just gonna pull it out. Fuck it. Sick. So well, you guys executed it really well. That's pretty. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I fuck with that song big time oh, too. Oh, I love yeah. that song. That Absolutely. song is so good. It's just one of those songs that we wrote early on, and uh, it's morphed a lot. You know that part with the whole break that didn't happen until we were in the uh, this, well, the Schwams like yeah, studio. The funny part about that break where you like where where there all the music stops. It happened to be like a mess up from our drummer at the time that was learning our music, who was from the Schwam. He like. He like thought the song was over, so he's just like boop, and then he just like stopped playing. And I'm like, wait, that was kind of cool, man. Like I know that was a mess up, but like, what if we just write that into the song and then like we make that little cutout and like, you know, more Yo, emphasis. bands and producers know the mistakes make the great moments. Yeah. Yes, seriously, they fucking know yep. how many times it's like, whoa, whoa, that actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it worked perfect. The stop and everything because it's so yeah. in your face. Yeah, exactly. It's beautiful. I'm pretty okay. sure we're gonna edit it in at this point, but fucking listen to it.
let's get into Munoz stock. Is there anything people should know about? Okay. Come to the event. Mm. Well, it's really fun. It's very it's, fun. It's not one of those events where you have to feel guilted or like nagged mm-hmm. to come out to. You should just, you know, probably be there because you're going to have a good time. Yeah. And that's like a whole point about it. It's not like us just being like, here's a bunch of bands. We're in a cold, dark yeah. venue. I, f- you know, I feel like this, like Munoz Stock, I feel like from the beginning has been that show that if you don't go to shows, this is the show you should go to, and this will be the most inclusive one. Because, I mean, honestly, a lot of our fans that we've even had and some of like our closest friends, like they've come from coming to Munoz Stock. They just happen to be there. Everybody's really friendly. We become friends with them, and they're like, now I'm going to go to local shows all the time. And that's literally what's happened with Quite a few of our friends, honestly. A couple of people have said it's changed their life kind of overnight. Yeah. One friend said that mm. it saved their life because yeah. they were going through some shit, and then they found the local scene, and it kind of kept them from killing themselves. Wow. Yeah. And then Shut another up. friend, like, uh, so one of the photographers in yes. the scene, Audrey. It, it launched her career, literally. Oh, well, yeah. Basically, she was there. uh 2017, when we were at the Broadway Mall. Shan's brother invited mm-hmm. her. We didn't know who she was, but, like, she took some pictures in there. There's some photos that we'll still post, and yeah. they just look pretty iconic. You know, you get like iconic a crazy pictures. sunset, and we're playing, and then Stoic. the freaking yeah. Macy's Beautiful. in the parking lot is in the background, <laughs> and it just looks real cool. And then, like, Shut we just up. kept hiring her. And then, like, by the, literally the day after, she was found by someone else who was booking shows, yeah. and she was already getting commissioned. And, you know, she ended up getting a lot of work, and now she's doing other things, yeah. but, you know, definitely helped her out. Yeah, I just said I, that was like one of my favorite stories is hearing that like she literally paid off her entire camera from like doing stuff after Munio saw because like everyone like saw what she did and they're like we're gonna hire you all the time and she was like taking everybody's pictures. Yeah, wow. so so crazy. Other yeah. than that, uh, one thing that sets it apart is that it's an outdoor event that is not a house show anymore. Um, now Outdoors. it's at a place called Station Sports mm-hmm. in Huntington. So we actually created our own stage last year, which is From something scratch. we'll get back to in a second. Yeah. But we also oh have God. live painters this year. We have video games like Smash Bros. Nick Torres. Art. Shout out Nick yeah. Torres. Shout out Nick. Yeah. Nick Torres. Oh, Nervous I painting. Shout out. Yeah. Nervous mm-hmm. painting. We'll have some Straight Smash Bros. and some arcade machine got stuff. Some mini golf. Some got mini some golf. Mini some awesome local bands. Yeah. Awesome local bands. Paint. We got some alcohol this year. Yeah. Yes, also, the alcohol is on the way. It's very interesting mix of things you could do. Yeah. 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 Games. Yeah. To mini golf, yeah, batting cages, like whoosh, fucking paintball. It's, paintball. It's it's an entertainment event. We want to entertain you. We want to show you that shows can be fun. Yeah, isn't that the whole point? Yeah, Why would you want to sit home? Like and you guys do were nothing? saying before, like with the people that never usually go, because sometimes the scene at, at like the nighttime going to these dark venues can be kind of intimidating. Yeah, this is kind of a light version to get yes. everybody, like a family, more family friendly oriented thing. Yes. in a sense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we tried to have a family friendly one year, and then everyone just started saying "fuck" all the time, and then I was like, "Well, <laughs> like on the stage, it was literally like, oh almost in the contract that we had to keep it that way." And yeah. then they just kind of started cursing all that. Yeah, but no, no biggie. That was still either way. fun either way. Eighteen plus family friendly event. <laughs> no, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, literally. honestly, this day and age, everyone's cursing. Yeah, fuck it. Babies yeah. are cursing. <laughs> Yeah, no. yeah. I'm trying to teach my godson. I'm trying to teach him to say fuck before yeah. he says anything else. Uh, it's not uh, working. He just uh, stares at me like uh. that'll probably be his <laughs> first word. Yeah, I'm trying. Like, oh my god, you never um, know. Well, I really think your event, uh, the event you got, is dope. You're bringing the community together, mm-hmm. and that's why I want you guys up here. Let them know about it. Fucking yeah. August third is the big one, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. August third. Yeah, Moon is yeah. it's cheap too. It ain't. It's twenty bucks, bro. You can oh, yeah. if you get a ticket. Yeah. If you get yeah. a ticket, it's fifteen. Fifteen. If you get it before on. the event, yeah. 15. Literally, it was it was fifteen at doors and twelve last year. Like for the amount of stuff, you got like eleven bands, a lot mini of golf. It's video free games. mini golf, yeah. and this yeah. isn't in just day. eleven band. Like these are. I'm looking at the band list here. There's some like really good bands. Yeah, is there on any you want to shout out for the event? I'm just going to shout them all out. Yeah, Kyle. Shout so out we to got yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. We got us. We got the Schwam from New Jersey. Yeah. Terogenous. Solemn right. Vision from yep. the Burroughs. Sargasm. Fucking Bad Mary. Man. The Recipe. Mega Wave. Stugats. And Winebox Lounge Chair. Mm-hmm. All a bunch of crazy bands yeah. and uh, new acts that we haven't worked with in some cases. You know what that yeah. sounds like? 
you guys are getting your money's worth if you go to the fucking event. To be honest with yeah. you, like, yeah, yes. yeah, that's awesome. No, you guys, you guys honestly over deliver on this with everything offered. There's thank nothing you, like you. this. So. Yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. out Munoz Stock, I, man. Thank you. I mean, the the whole point is to is to it's like it's a festival that you know it's all this inclusive stuff, but it's a festival that's made by bands for bands. It's for the scene. It's like. You know, we're trying to revive this scene. I mean, oh. you know, it's live, but, you know, it's been doing better. Doing a little but, defibrillator. Like, yeah, trying, a little to, defibrillator. trying to give life to the scene, no yeah. matter where it is. Yeah. Because, Couldn't I mean, we've job. been doing it for years. This is the eighth year. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to, like, give back whatever success we're able to, you yeah. know, influence yeah. and then give back. You know, and another thing about the fest, it wasn't super realized immediately, but, you know, we never really felt like we fit in as yeah. far as a band. Because, you know. Never. Punk bands won't really see us as a punk yeah, band. Like, Metal oh, bands no, will no, like no, us, no. but they'll think not we're a punk, punk band. Mm-hmm. And then all the other bands that aren't either of those things either like us or, they, you know, usually they like us. I don't really know. A lot of people yeah. that just say that they don't like us. Yeah. But whatever the case, you know, we wanted people to feel like they're included on something, that the scene was bigger than just where do I find the bands that sound like us? Where yeah. can I play yeah. with them? You That's know, beautiful. if you go on this, you know, we got some experimental bands. The Schwams, Sky-ish, they have the instrumentation, but they're mm-hmm. also got a lot of dancing vibes that you can yeah. get yeah. into partying and everything. But the Atrogenous is like, got a lot of good vocals and harmonies and it's progressive music mm-hmm. along with Psalm Visions. It's got more of a death metal to the progressive yeah. side. And, Sarg- and then the recipes fucking uh, reggae rap. Yeah. 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 Shout yeah. out them. Yeah. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sarg- oh, yeah. make, maybe it'll make you laugh. You yeah. Sarg- I mean? Sarg- <laughs> <laughs> make you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah they, no. They got those riffs very similar mm-hmm. to CKY in some cases yeah. and uh Bad Mary's got like that high energy punk. And yeah, it's a good time. And congrats to you guys for opening up for CKY. Yeah, that was, yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Oh god, that was crazy. That was unreal. I still don't even know. I'm like, I like think back. I'm like, we played with CKY. I like that was whole. That whole thing was a blur. Yeah, it was a blur. That was a thing that looked yeah. good on the resume. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking yeah. resume builder. There's a lot sure. of people like we've made friends with just from that. We were able to draw like 70 people on a on Wednesday, and then That's like crazy. three days yeah. later, still drew 15 people for our friends band. Like we put a you know stock and event show, and we yeah that was the last one we played because we want to be able to bring more people that they don't know already. Mm-hmm. Like they already know who we are if we're yeah. booking them. So yeah. like. Mm-hmm. But either case, the fact that we were able to draw 15 people without really having to do a whole lot was good to know. Right after a 70-person draw. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I thought that was all of our people. Yeah. Got no more PP. It was everybody. <laughs> 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 so outside of this event and outside of music, do you guys have any other hobbies, yes. passions? Yes. I yep. mean, he likes to work out. I like work out a lot. Okay, fitness. I do like fitness. I like I like skateboarding. That's nice. Okay. I, I also collect vinyl records, so that's kind of cool. Interesting. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a lot of old like old school hip hop. I have like a whole turntable set up. You know, that's a little awesome. scratching here and there. So who knows? You might see it in one of our one of our songs, and then we could really be the you know kings of Long Island. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you heard it here first, people. Fucking again, <laughs> twice in the same episode. <laughs> Nobody said it twice. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not even a fucking rapper, all right? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh my God. No one even knows why that's being said, but listen, <laughs> just putting it out there, it's a joke. Anyway, <laughs> hobbies for me, uh, I don't really like exactly enjoy doing art sometimes, but I do do a lot of commission artwork, okay. like portraits and everything. But ever since I started dating... Um, my girlfriend Allie. She's shout been, out Allie. Shout out Allie. Shout she out does all Awu. my merch. Shout yeah, out. she does a lot of things since uh, before the tour. She's been taking a lot of commissions. I was able to somehow have her being someone who does artwork for our merch to also getting her own following kind of kickstarted through that. Cool. A lot of like hundreds of people will end up seeing stuff because her art is on our merch and a lot of people buy our merch. So. That's awesome. And actually, mm-hmm. another shout out to this Equilibrium Bookings. We're going to be one of the shout featured acts. Mm-hmm. So many shout outs. Mm-hmm. Shout out, to shout that. out, shout out. <laughs> we are the featured band for an open mic of yeah. theirs, but also Ali Tuesday. is. Uh, yeah, Ali's going to be the featured artist awesome. for the open mic mm-hmm. as well. So that's, that's interesting. Crazy. She was pretty happy about that. Everyone's growing together. Everybody's yeah, growing together. Yeah, it's a beautiful that's thing. So I'll. So yeah, I'll do art, but I also enjoy video games in case, you know, this is not being too on the nose about our festival. <laughs> but like, you know, there, yeah. I'll play some Heroes of the Storm. I used to play WoW a lot. My, cool. Met my best friend through that. Um, That's lit. But I've been also collecting video games because when I was young, I got Halo 3 and uh, kind of just gave away my 200 plus game collection. 
and I've been regretting it, but yeah, now it's like, why would you do yeah, that? Yeah, right. So like, but video game trading post shout out is <laughs> <laughs> at Levittown. I love it. Shout out. <laughs> so yeah, shout out I've been going there a lot, and I'll be buying games. You know, I remember I went in there recently, and uh, before I went on tour, and like, I was not even paying attention. They had Endgame playing before it was out of theaters, and he was just like, I'm not gonna spoil you. But he first was like, hey, Kyler. So, like, I'm already getting my name in that community of video games. And actually, before that, when Smash Bros. Ultimate came out, I I was trying to go pro for a couple months Word. until I had to start touring aggressively. And then I couldn't make any of the dates. And the dates I could, I would be too tired. And not in the right mindset. And also, I don't know. You know, when you're, like, in a band at this level and you feel like you've kind of gained a a reputation that's good and people like you to some extent and then you start going to the video game community it's like some people are nice but then a lot of people will just make you feel like a fucking loser so it's yeah. like i don't want to <laughs> go to back to feeling like that i feel you <laughs> I, i'm a big video game guy myself like i'm yeah. more of a sports game guy i see the whole fucking game battles thing and mm -hmm. fucking fuck you know throw my yeah. controller and he told <laughs> yep. i'm an idiot and stuff you know? mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Get so those beautiful messages I went to two tournaments and so I lost happens. both of my first matches. No fucking big deal. He's been at tournaments. But I did get tour ready. Not tour ready. I got into tournament ready. And now I'm pretty good if I've versed some people that are not tournament good. Yeah. You know? Just smack around the local chumps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel it. I dig it. So yeah. love that. That's, that's what Kyle's going to be doing at Munoz stock on August 3rd. So no, I'm <laughs> probably not. I'm probably going to be very <laughs> hot and frustrated and <laughs> try to make sure everyone else has a better time than we are. That's, yes. that's a beautiful. Thing. Yeah. By the way, Munoz stock every single time we end up playing it, like literally we are like, like this close to dying. We're like, we're playing now. <laughs> we're like half dead, sweated out all of our fluids, and yeah. have not ate and like been up since like five, six in the morning, and like dealing yeah. with the fact that it could have rained. And last year it was the first year it did in the mid, like the very beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. Like we're just standing. I remember this very iconic moment in my life where I'm standing underneath the tent, and most of the people aren't there yet, including like my team. And Allie's just sitting in my car, and one of the art vendors is sitting under his tent with all the stuff already on display and it's just like basically <laughs> high winds and like downpour the tent covering the stage has just gallons of water just getting pocketed and you got to push it out yeah. and you're just getting soaked there's nothing around it why did i even get ready for this day yeah. i looked like a mess by the time yeah. it stopped raining and then it just became heat and you're gonna have yeah. a heat stroke and it sucked yeah. by the time we played i was like pretty much dead already because like yeah. i remember halfway through this like the show i was just like is it over yet like, is, is, are people <laughs> having a good time <laughs> you know like we had some complications We're that made there. things go a little slower too so that didn't help that i felt like it was going slow for me because yeah. delirium was an yeah. uh, inherent in inevitability for me on stage like all right, next song. <laughs> <laughs> it, yep. it was nice to know that we still had like 50 plus people in front of the stage, though. That's crazy. Yeah, that's but yeah, mean. speaking of the stage, that's what I was going to get back to. Oh, yeah, the stage. Not to like, we built drag it from stuff. scratch. Yeah. Literally a week out, we were like, we should make a stage. And oh, then we no, did. we were thinking about this the whole time. I was going back and forth. Um, like trying to, I'm like, is it more viable for us to buy a stage, to make a stage, rent a stage? Who knows? It, you know, renting a stage alone, that like is already going to cost you like $12,000 easily. And buying a stage is going to be even more like $24,000. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to make this shit ourselves. We're all Hispanic here. I mean, I mean besides Kyle, but I mean, like, John's it's okay. not Hispanic. You, you know, but I'm <laughs> like, we could teach him, so you know. <laughs> yeah, and then we, you know, we just, we literally bought all of the wood, and we cut it at my house, and just start building it, and built that thing from scratch. That's awesome. So we had That's crazy. What was it? Plywood and four by four, two by fours, and uh, we just made it in t nine hours. And then like the next day, we just kind of like put a waterproof coat on it, which really wasn't a big yeah. deal. We just it's didn't have days. it yet. Yeah. yeah. So we did that really quickly, and uh, for the rest of the stage set up, so we had five pieces of the stage we put together. We had a t uh, 40 by 40 tent that we had on top of it, which also kind of gave uh, more of like a backstage area. Mm -hmm. Then we had Christmas lights on the inside of it. Uh, we had 15 artists make art with the concept of dogs, space, video games, and music, and we put them on 
three different banners that were all in red, blue, and green. And depending yeah. on what lighting we had shined on, it, certain designs would show more than others, like a, right. a weird collage. Uh, we had the TV that had mm -hmm. all the bands, pictures, and informations, and all the branding. Fog machine, all it, like it literally held up at one point when nonstop Takara was playing, like mm -hmm. nine to ten people almost. Wow. Like that's including their amps and the drum set, and yeah. it didn't yeah. show any signs of being about to break. Yeah, that You're was the part. That was the part where I was like, "Oh my god, I am so glad that thing has not collapsed." Just knowing that we built that thing ourselves, like four days ago, and that, and you know, so many people are on this thing is not breaking. So, is this yeah. thing still in it's commission? Good. It is. It uh, is. Yeah. Right people... now, it, it's how it's home. Right now is in Amityville at our drummer John's house. Well, John's well, house no, the garage. no, it doesn't exist. Not in the public eye. It's not in the public people, eye. But <laughs> people, someone's going to steal it. Um, yeah. But yeah, friggin', uh, people have actually tried to like, what is it, rent it out? Yeah, they have but, tried to rent our stage. But the logistics behind that one time was really kind of complicated and if you want to indulge in me trying to explain how it wasn't going to work out i can go into that <laughs> but basically someone wanted it on a day but mm -hmm. we were on tour but we we're on tour for three days so basically what we would have to do is get all of our stuff out of our tour van put it somewhere in the house then drive out to where the the stage is break mm -hmm. get the stage that's already breaking down put it into the van which we actually before any of this happens we have to take out the seats that are in the van it's a logistical mm -hmm. nightmare so yeah, yeah basically we get it in the stage bring it out there put it there Go on tour, hope that nothing bad happens to it, doesn't get rained, no one steals parts of it or breaks it. And then we got to come back, take everything out of the van, take out the seats, go back there, put <laughs> break down the stage, which we had to also put back together, and then put it back in the van, bring it back to the place, put it in there, and then go back to where all of our stuff is, put the seats back in, and put all of our gear, and then probably go back on tour like the next day. And uh, <laughs> not it seems it. overwhelming. It's like, and, no. not fucking yeah, no, we don't have a stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's but pretty much where we're at the at. same time, you know, if we had a way of figuring it out, we didn't have tour going on. You know, if you had the money and yeah. you actually had an event which was worth spending hundreds of dollars on it, we might rent it out. Yeah, we actually are in the works of becoming a. Per production company slowly but surely right so on. like we are the yeah. band we do touring we do all this stuff we have the festival after the festival was really good last year mm -hmm. we ended up making me on stock and events so a lot of times most of the shows are either one or two things we'll have a show trade with a touring band and i'll bring them out to my area they'll bring me out to theirs and we'll have my friends bands that i, I trust to do some good drawing have them play like open and close for these touring bands everyone gets paid everyone has a good time hopefully people are making connections along the way mm -hmm. and then we also have the fundraiser shows like the one you were at road meo stock friends giving it's your birthday try to make like a sold out show happen and uh you know give opportunities to not only help us make some money for the festival but if people choose to overachieve, they'll also be making money. But it might take a little bit more effort because, you know. So is it safe to say when you think the muckrakers, you should think moving forward? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. it sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are doing big things. Big fucking yeah. things out here. That's We're trying crazy. to help everybody. One day at a time. It, it's, you guys got a lot on your plate, and you guys seem to be executing yeah, it quite oh well. God, I don't know how we got it. Shout out to you. I introduced you guys as passionate and hardworking. I wasn't fucking old. Yeah, it's not a joke. It's yeah. not just That's a little not, thing. This is crazy. Ends. Look at all this they're and doing. We, like, and we still have jobs to go back to during the week. Yeah. So, so if somebody tells me you don't have the yeah. fucking time to do something, you're a fucking liar. Because yeah. they, you guys made time for this. Yeah. yeah. Out of your fucking schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you make what your life, you you make what you want out of your life, and you create who you are. Like as I said earlier, with the whole video game statement, feeling like mm -hmm. a loser. Like I didn't have anything like originally. Like I drew. I wanted to play video games. Maybe I would have drawn for video games. But if, like I got a guitar one day, and I'm knew shannon a little bit we hung out and the band thing yeah. happened but like if he didn't come back two different times after a school hiatus like we would have not even been a band very quickly yeah. and like the persistence and just wanting it the same amount like we stuck through after like basically 
Yeah. Like after seven other drummers, yeah, the amount of times that we had to like recreate the band, like we would get a couple shows and have to find a new drummer. And I remember yeah. many times where I was just fucking depressed and like suicidal. I had suicide attempts in between all this stuff. Wow. Even though I had other bands to occupy my time, life wasn't the best. And sometimes you feel a little hopeless. Mm-hmm. And with the whole not knowing what's going to go on, by the time we actually met John and he actually, uh, we had his him audition with our cover of Moondance and Self Loathing, and he played it. No offense to Mike, but like better than we expected, even compared to the recording. Like mm-hmm. I literally started laughing and nearly crying because yep. it seemed like everything was starting to make sense. But it took four years to get to that point, and it's been yeah. like four years and change with John since. Yeah, and it's incredible. Here we are, and look at all the things you guys accomplished, and there's yeah. way more to go, and yeah. it's crazy. So props to you guys. Yeah, crazy story. We're Cannot. one. Of, yeah, exactly. We're yeah. one of those bands that even when like things are going, everything is going wrong, we're still making things happen. We'll be like missing yeah. a leg, and we'll be like, we're still moving, yeah. trucking through, getting things done. Keep on trucking. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, one thing, one song that always kind of gets me through a rough patch is uh, a day to remember is right back at it again. Where it just seems right back at it again. <laughs> shout outs. Like shout, shout out, out Dater. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fucking shout out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that song is kind of like literally the song version of my Do More tattoo, where it's like, I remember watching like one of those Hot Ones episodes. Shout out to Hot Ones. Shout, shout out. out. <laughs> shout out. Yeah, it's kind of a dick thing, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> literally, <laughs> one of the guys, he had a, sh- a Do More tattoo, and he was explaining why he did, and it was kind of like whenever things suck and like, oh, shit, we have, I owe all this money, or I need to get this thing accomplished, but it's seeming very daunting, but there's really nothing in your control to do besides basically just getting it done. What do you tell yourself? Just do more. Just figure it out get it done and uh i forget i have the tattoo but whenever i feel like i need it and i look down and i'm like right yeah just fucking do more yeah right. and uh just don't think things are impossible because the moment you say that you mm-hmm. can't do something you won't even try so facts shout facts. out to facts i get like a funk flex <laughs> bomb dropping <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh it was God. awesome you guys yeah, coming great. out, spending yeah. your time with Thank us. You it so was much. dope. Mm-hmm. You guys got a lot going on. Hell yeah. <laughs> and for people who are interested, where can people follow you guys on your journey? Facebook. Facebook, Instagram. My Facebook, personally. Uh, but I have too many friends, so I have to figure out other things. Yeah. yeah it's getting annoying. I mean, uh, what's Facebook, that? Instagram is really, is really the thing. I mean, yeah. he, he posts pretty regularly. I'll, yeah. I'll update the story a lot of the times. Uh, yeah, we're the Muckrakers Li. Yeah. Muckrakers Li. On Facebook, you so. just gotta find the Muckrakers, and you'll see uh, us. But mm-hmm. if you find the other bands and they don't have ten thousand plus likes, then it's not us. There's a lot of bang bang yeah. shots fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Fuck you on your subpar likes. <laughs> no. <laughs> this kid. <I'm>, uh, <laughs> there is another He's one that. No, there, there was another band with the same name that rose to fame to some extent. Uh, had some mainstream success before I was even like playing an instrument. Yeah. But they did kind of go off the radar with the case of the old, as they call it. Stay off yeah. the fucking radar. But, but <laughs> honestly, 10K likes on a Facebook page, that is not That's easy. It's a Facebook page. Who fucking uses that anymore? Yeah, no, nope, no one. <laughs> <laughs> and where can they find uh, the event? So this is a flyer. Uh, it's Beautiful. got a bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find it on Facebook. Yeah. You, ch- you type in Munostock 2019. Yeah. We've got like close to 400 people on it if you count uh, going and interested. And... Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. you should just come out and Check have a good out. time. And Facebook. even if you're not, like, playing, which, I mean, there's a lot of people that aren't playing besides these bands, obviously. But, like, if you're in a band, don't feel discouraged. If you want to eventually play, definitely come out and meet all the bands. Meet us. Them up. Grow a relationship. Mm-hmm. Network. Talk. Network. Yeah. Shake Talk hands, guys. Us. Come on. You never know. Like, you, maybe you could play an MSC show. And, like, if we build a good relationship and your music's awesome. You know, you could possibly play it one day, you know? Knows, yeah. It's not about like clickiness, it's about just, you know, having good relationships with good like with good people, you know. Yeah. You know, a lot of people yeah. ask to get on it, like almost Demands. anyone who tries to talk to us that has a music thing. So it's kinda hard to like curate a bill that's gonna make anyone satisfied. Yeah. So you're yeah. never going to, but you, you gotta try to do the right thing. Doesn't hurt to ask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't hurt to ask. No. Yeah. Network. Definitely not. Well, 
blah. It's been a fucking pleasure, guys. We yeah, really yeah, appreciate it. Guys. Thank Thanks you so much, out. man. No problem. And, uh, you know, this episode of fucking LA on the Rise. Shout okay. out to LA on the Rise. LA on the Rise. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out.